Hello students, in this video we will learn how a current loop behaves as a magnetic dipole. In our previous chapter moving charges and magnetism we have calculated magnetic field at a point on the axis of a circular coil carrying current. We will be using that derivation in this topic. So let us start this video. Before going into detail, we should be aware what a magnetic dipole is. As we have studied in electrostatics, an electric dipole is a pair of opposite charges placed at a small distance apart. Similarly, in magnetic dipole, it consists of two unlike poles of equal strength and separated by a small distance, like in a bar magnet. Now these two poles can be north pole and south pole. They are always of equal strength and opposite nature. Now let us consider a circular loop as shown here. See its upper side. The current is in anti-clockwise direction and the anti-clockwise direction means north pole. And from the lower side, the same current will appear as moving in clockwise direction. So, this side will appear as south pole. So, in this way we can find the polarity of the current loop by looking at its upper and lower face. When you will look the upper face here in this according to this figure, the current is in anti-clockwise direction so it will be appearing as the north polarity and when you will look from the lower face the same current will appear as in clockwise direction so it will be south polarity. If you look carefully this is a single loop if the number of loops are increased it will form a solenoid and we know how to find the polarities of a solenoid by clock face rule that is we have just discussed here. So we can say that a single current loop can be extended to form a number of loops and hence a solenoid is formed or you can say a bar magnet is equivalent to a solenoid which we are going to study it in detail in our later topics. Let us continue with the current loop as magnetic dipole. Now see here, this is the current loop and as we have just discussed the polarities, so we have found this side as anti-clockwise, so this is the north pole and this side is appearing as south pole. So the current loop is behaving as a bar magnet and the magnetic field lines originate from north pole and end towards the south pole. And what we have to do here, we have to find the magnetic field at a point P which is lying on the axis of the current loop at a distance X from the center of the loop. The loop is having radius of A. The total magnetic field due to this current loop of radius A at a point P on the axis can be obtained as this that is mu naught i a square upon 2 a square plus x square raised to the power 3 by 2. This we have already derived in our previous videos of previous chapter that is chapter number 4. So you must watch that video before going into detail of this topic. The direction of the magnetic field will be along the axis of the loop and away from the loop as is shown here. When this point P lies at a far off distance from the center of the coil, then we can neglect A square from the denominator and finally we will obtain the magnetic field as mu naught I A square upon 2x cube. I can also multiply 2 pi in the numerator 
as well as 2 pi in the denominator. See what happens this 2 pi in the denominator will lead to 4 pi x cube like this and in the numerator it will be mu naught i into 2 into pi a square look carefully this pi a square is the area of the current loop so I have replaced pi a square by area a rest of the terms are as it is copied now see this i a I have replaced by magnetic dipole moment small m of the current loop and the SI unit of magnetic dipole moment is ampere meter square that we can calculate from the formula itself that is current I is ampere and area is in meter square like this. In vector notation this magnetic dipole moment can be written as I A into n cap where n cap is the unit vector which is perpendicular to the plane of the loop as is shown in the figure earlier. Now this expression if we look carefully is similar to the expression of the electric field due to an electric dipole on the axis and this similarity can be observed by putting mu naught is equal to 1 upon epsilon naught. Magnetic dipole moment can be replaced by electric dipole moment and the magnetic field can be replaced by electric field E. So when we will replace all these terms we will find the electric field due to an electric dipole on the axis as 2p upon 4 pi epsilon naught x cube which is the same as we have derived in our electrostatics. So you can look carefully from the figure that this similarity can be easily understood. In magnetic dipole that is a bar magnet magnetic field lines originate from north pole and end at south pole while in electric dipole which is formed by two equal and opposite charges placed at a small distance apart these field lines originate from positive charge and end at negative charge. So the similarity can be easily understood. Now this same analogy can be carried further to find the magnetic field at the perpendicular bisector of the dipole and we have already derived in our electrostatics chapter that electric field at the perpendicular bisector of the dipole is given by this expression. So if we replace these terms by the, their analogs we will obtain the magnetic field at the perpendicular bisector of the dipole like this that is electric field is replaced by magnetic field electric dipole is replaced by magnetic dipole and 1 upon epsilon naught is replaced by mu naught rest of the terms 4 pi x cube is copied as it is. So the analog of electric dipole moment P is magnetic dipole moment M but the difference is that the electric dipole is built by two charges or electric monopoles that we have just seen but in magnetism a magnetic dipole or a current loop is the elementary element and the equivalent of electric charges or magnetic monopoles do not exist like in electrostatics there were positive and negative charges which form the dipole but here in magnetism these magnetic poles cannot be separated. So we have just seen that the current loop produces a magnetic field and behaves like a magnetic dipole at far off distances and also a torque exists on it. So all the magnetic phenomena can be explained in terms of the arrangement of magnetic dipoles or current loops and hence Ampere suggested 
that all the magnetism is due to the circulating currents. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe.